Even in large classes with fixed seating, team-based learning motivates students to high levels of attendance, preparation, participation, and critical thinking. But team-based learning is not any old form of active learning or group work. In team-based learning, students engage course content at an applied level, motivated by both task design and incentive structures to spend time on task, gathering input from all their teammates. Four practical elements of team-based learning prepare and motivate students for this high level of engagement. The first is strategically formed permanent teams. Decide what student characteristics would make it easier or more difficult for a student to do well in your class and ensure that these characteristics are spread as fairly as possible across teams. So how can we create a team that's going to be balanced uh, in terms of you know, the characteristics of the, of the students in the class by having all the students at the beginning of the semester you know, take a, um, a survey and basically answer a set of questions that would then help us to kind of group them. And uh, so we built up uh, a spreadsheet of teams that we could then um, assign the students to. So when we come to class, up on the big docucam, I have kind of a seating arrangement set up of the entire classroom and where your team is supposed to be sitting. The way that I constructed them was to, to make them as diverse as possible. These teams are six, seven members each, and these teams are permanent. So they don't shift, this is who you belong to, and you sink or swim, and I'm hoping swim together. You know, our group was really diverse. You know, we had you know, three seniors, two freshmen, everyone's a different major. No one knew each other going into it. You know, when, we come, when you come together, it's pretty interesting to see us all become like friends at the end of it. The second element of team-based learning is a sequence of activities that takes place at the beginning of each unit of the course. This sequence is called the readiness assurance process because it assures that students are ready to move forward into high-level application of the material. Having completed assigned readings, students first take an individual test over them. Then they take the exact same test again as a team, coming to consensus on their team answers. They get immediate feedback on their team tests, after which they can write appeals if they figure they can make a case for their answers which were marked as incorrect. To guide them, um, I've created a, a reading guide with some general questions and then some specific terms that I want them to look for. Having read the books and looked over the, the guide and reasonably comfortable, at least that they've read the information, they come into class the first day and they take a quiz. 20 points, multiple choice. Then, uh, after they've done that, I put them in the groups. Each team retakes the same quiz, and they have a scratch-off. I distribute these scratch cards, and the students, then I break the students into their groups, and they go through the questions as a group, and they decide what the answer should be, and then they scratch off uh, what they think the answer should be, and if the answer is correct, then they see a little asterisk. I'm not scratching until I get approval from everyone. Okay, 34, we said A. Come on, A. Uh, that's wrong. So now we're going with D. With the scratch off thing, I actually like the way that worked because you had to keep going until you got it right. And so it, you couldn't just like miss it and say, oh, forget it, we didn't get it. You know, you kind of had to, okay, well, if this isn't the case, now what? When I walk around, it is just astounding to hear these students arguing over fine points of Texas civil procedure. They point out to each other, well, this is what this rule says. Well, this comment in this rule says something else, and how do you put those together? And I've never heard anyone say, ah, you know, I told you it was B and you, didn't, you over, overrode what I said. Or, um, it's, it's kind of remarkable in that way. I found the, uh, it seems very collaborative and not um, competitive. You know, there's one guy who was, you know, really, really smart in our group. And, you know, there's one question where we all had, like, the same answer and he had one different one. And, you know, we almost, I think we went through, like, almost every answer except his. And at the end, he was right. And, you know, it's just because he didn't speak up. Next time, that, next time it got around, he made sure he's like, listen, I, I remember this, you know, this, is, this happened because of this. I'm pretty sure this is right. We're like, we, I think we owe you one. So, you know, we trusted him. It was right. And that was the best part about it. So just kind of involving everyone. At the end of the readiness assurance process, 
If teams feel they can argue in support of any of their answers which were marked incorrect, they can generate written appeals, which must consist of a clear statement of argument, supported by specific evidence from the readings. If I wrote a question that's poorly worded, if it's ambiguous, um, they can rewrite it. If, uh, or if, there's, if I just put the wrong answer, they can, if they can go into their book, write out the, this is the correct answer on this page, and they have to cite the evidence. They seem to work well together, and again, it's a, it's a real team spirit building exercise. The readiness assurance process is followed by a clarifying lecture in which the teacher can focus specifically upon what the team scores indicate the students have not yet grasped. The third element of team-based learning consists of application activities in which students must make decisions to solve discipline-based problems, often using case studies, realistic data, or other specific examples of materials from your field. These activities work best when they incorporate four elements that all begin with the letter S. First, problems must be significant in the sense of demonstrating a concept's usefulness. Second, groups should be required to use course concepts to make a specific choice, for example, which procedure is best to implement in a given situation and why, or from a certain article, what is the best piece of evidence in support of an argument and why. Third, all teams should work on the same problem, case, or question, so they will care about decisions other groups made and their rationales. Fourth, if possible, groups should report choices simultaneously, so differences in group conclusions can be explored immediately. This semester I taught one class with 345 students in it. Oftentimes with cases, you know, there's not necessarily a right answer or wrong answer. It's, you know, how is it that you reach the particular decision that you reach? What were the steps that you went through in order to reach the conclusion that you reached? So I use the um, iClicker technology to be able to kind of gauge where the students are at at any given time um, in terms of what they're thinking about the case. There's emphasis on you have to learn a certain number of facts, but more I'm interested in them learning the process of thinking through history, how to think like a historian does. The way I've done this is, is to create a, a kind of a large sheet, an 11 by 17 sheet, that has uh, kind of steps that one needs to go through to think about this answer. Uh, each of these documents basically is steps to writing a good essay. So I had agree or disagree, Cold War fears were justified, and taking this from the historian's viewpoint, and so agree, disagree, write a very short explanation. So the idea is to take them down sort of sequentially through a series of thought. It's about the New Deal, and it was, if you had to summarize it in one sentence, and you, we had one sentence here, one sentence here, pick which one you thought was more accurate and then you take that one and compare it to another sentence, which one's more accurate, and then you take the winner of that one, like a tournament kind of, and so you end up with the one sentence you like the best at the end. And we found that one was kind of hard, just because like, you want to take part of this sentence and part of this sentence and part of this sentence and kind of put it all together in your own thing, which we had to do at the end. We could say this about them that's negative, we could say this about them that's positive, and then to write some sort of summary statement that, that tries to get at some more nuanced meaning. And then we could go up, and each one of us, like, you know, we, weren't, we wouldn't go up and present, but we could give our big sheets, she could put it on the projector, and each one of us could, you know, have a different, you know, take on it. This is a great exercise because they are using the rules to dissect a statement and make an argument one way or the other. What my reasoning is is that once the court makes a new judgment, so like once that motion is filed, it's possible to go 90 days. It's wonderful lawyering technique. The way I've always taught it before team-based learning was stand-up lecture. Students are half asleep. I didn't, couldn't tell if they were good lawyers or not because they sat there and um, didn't talk very much. So they're, I'm impressed my class. I now know my, my class are good lawyers. A group becomes a team when members not only feel accountable to an outside authority, but also feel accountable to one another. Therefore, the last element of team-based learning is student-to-student -student teammate feedback. Halfway through the term, and again at the end, students are required to give one another brief pieces of group participation feedback. In many cases, this takes the form of students expressing for each teammate one thing they appreciate and one thing they request. 
These are given to the teacher or TA who then processes them and emails each student a compilation of what their teammates appreciate about and request from them as teammates. Lots of them said, what I request of you is keep up the good work. So that, you know, that's nice in itself. Uh, others of them, they said things like, you have such good ideas, I wish you'd come to class more. One student I remember, people said, you contribute so much to this group, but you have a negative attitude. And every single person on the team said, but you have a negative attitude. These are things that I can't tell students. I can't walk up to a student and say, you know, clean up that attitude. And it just doesn't work. The prof professorial role is, is an extension of the parental role, <laughs> in a way. And I think it tends to incite a kind of rebelliousness, or it can't help but do that and it seems to me that when a, another student tells another student you need to come to class more it's more of a f on a friendly basis I think more like a brother or, or if you want to use the family model more like a brother or a sister than uh, than a parent with the four essential elements of strategically formed permanent teams readiness assurance well-designed application activities and peer evaluations in place you will be ready to encounter more motivated, engaged, collaborative, critical thinkers in your classroom than you may have thought possible. I do know in the past, when I didn't use the team-based learning, students didn't like working in groups, or a lot of them didn't. They would say, I don't like hearing from my, my classmates, I want to hear from the professor, and I don't, I don't get that feedback anymore, so that's huge. You know, it forces you to work that hard, it forces you to put in the effort where every day you're going to be there, every day you're going to be ready, and every day you're going to be prepared because people are relying on you to be prepared and be there. They're learning more. Um, I'm learning more. I know more about what they understand and what they don't understand. I had a lecture class last semester, and I had this team-based learning class this semester, and I thought this class was 10 times better than the last one. I felt like I learned more, came to class more, read more, yeah. everything, you know. I mean, it's enjoyable. It really made history. I really am not a big fan of history at all, but I really enjoyed this class.